five kilometers long this valley 85 miles long in fact it has a variety of agriculture and uh, farming and uh, it really links uh, it links this part of france into italy that's johnny hoogland number 204 He's 40 men working well together, 204 here. Johnny Hoogland was one of the first to get into the move. He's anxious to get on and see if he can get more points in the King of the Mountains. He was the early leader of that. Had a spectacular crash on the road to San Floor when he went into that barbed wire fence. Seems to have recovered over the next 10 days, though. So there's the train uh, going the opposite way to the main field, and the main field now uh, being... Uh given a gap of 35 seconds over this group. Uh, Isagir Utasan, uh, that's uh, Leonardo Duque there, the Colombian rider. He's been in the breakaway on a number of occasions. And that's the freeway continuing to meander down as this race uh, heads deeper into France today. So, the peloton uh, bunched across the road there. That's an indication maybe the pressure has turned off uh, slightly as they've started to see there's nobody really dangerous in that leading group of riders. In fact, uh, the majority of the riders in that leading group more than an hour behind in the overall standings. Now, there's Andy Schleck, second in the black behind their teammates here, just looking around. That's Jakob Fulsang there at the front protecting it the leader Schleck looks pretty happy with the way the race has started a little bit of a smile with the teammates ex-teammates of his uh, but uh, still the teammates of Alberto Contador well Phil I have to tell you I think I tell you this every year but it would be remiss of me to avoid mentioning that in 218 BC Hannibal marched down here uh, with uh, 90 infantry 12,000 cavalry and 37 elephants and uh, that was uh, one of the remarkable crossings of the Alps on his way into Italy Yes, he made a big name for himself. Who's going to make a big name for themselves today? So the river Morienne is the river just in the bottom there. It springs at 2,700 meters in altitude at the glacier of uh, Levana. And that's uh, right on the French-Italian border. Flows right the way down into the river Isère, which uh, then goes around and through to Grenoble. Fabien Cancellara on the front. And what will be the tactic today of Team Leopard Trek? They had an incredible day of racing yesterday. And tactically, uh, Andy Schleck could have lost everything with a move like that. Attacking so far from the finish is extremely rare in modern-day professional cycling. But he took the risk. And in the back, he always had a, a little spare because his uh, spare tactic would be if he got caught towards the end after all of the other big leaders had chased him down, Brother Frank would have had an extremely easy ride. And Brother Frank finished it off yesterday by getting himself a very good second place on the stage. However, Cadell Evans, over the last uh, 11 and a half kilometers of the race, in fact, pulled back two minutes of the advantage of Andy Schleck on his own. And that was, uh, as again, once again, the Australian rider. Every time it's looked as if the tables have been turning against the peloton, Cadell Evans has assumed the responsibility himself personally to pull the race back onto his side. Today could be the day that Cadell actually lays the foundations down for a victory in the Tour de France here this afternoon. Uh, he's not too concerned about these guys. He'll be concerned about two men in this race, I think, today. One would be Andy Schleck, the other would be Frank Schleck. But what uh, the big question on everybody's minds is this morning, has Andy Schleck recovered from that incredible race that he did yesterday? That's Andre Greipel, number 33. Now, BMC Racing have put a man in the breakaway, and that's Marcus Burkhardt. The reason for Burkhardt to being there is to make sure that he can survive over the climbs. He's not one of the great climbers, so what they, what teams do on a stage like this, just like they did yesterday, Leopard Trek, they put two riders into the early breakaway so they could use them in the latter part of the race. And having Maxime Montfort in that breakaway yesterday was actually instrumental in allowing uh, Andy Schleck to bridge up to him. And then he used Maxime Montfort for as long as he could into the headwind along the valley from Briançon up to the Col de Lotere before leaving his teammate behind. Well, these guys are looking at an extremely high speed here. Uh, I've got a quick average speed coming in, and uh, it looks as if they're riding along here in excess of 54 kilometers an hour. The average speed of the race after just 8.5 kilometers, in fact, is uh, still 49 kilometers an hour. The main field, although it doesn't look as if they're uh, charging along, they're also uh, not really losing too much to the leaders. There's uh, eight... Eight nations are represented in the breakaway of 14 riders. It's a very nice breakaway too, and they've uh, they've seemed to have shaken out a nice uh, 
number of riders in the breakaway and riders who are not going to affect or attract an attack from Cadell Evans or the Schlecks just yet. Little mechanical there for Thomas Vokler being accompanied by his teammates as he brings them back up to the front. So that's Anthony Chateau on the far side, the King of the Mountains winner from the tour last year. The question mark, I suppose, on all of France's minds today, Phil, is can Thomas Vokler survive?